Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday here at Bible Tract Echoes. Those two words, Tract and Truth, are the words we give as a title to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcast. The word Tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, and we're referring to a gospel tract. And when we use the word truth, we're referring to the truth of the gospel as found in the Bible, the Word of God. Dear friend, the gospel means good news, and the good news is not found in a person on the radio, but the person of Jesus Christ. I can tell you about Jesus Christ. Other radio or television speakers can talk about Jesus Christ. You can learn about Jesus Christ at a gospel preaching church, but dear friend, a preacher is not the good news. The good news is the person the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus said. Oh, I can tell you about Jesus, but I cannot save your soul from sin. I need a savior, and I came to Christ when I was a youngster. Well, I have my Bible right now open to two particular passages of Scripture. One is found in the book of Proverbs, chapter 11. The other is in Matthew and chapter 12. Before I read those and go any farther, let me ask a couple of questions of you. What is your view on saving money? Or how about this one? What's your opinion on people running up to you and handing you money? Oh, now, when I preach or teach uh, the Word of God, I try to find a story or something that will hopefully quickly draw in my listeners. Well, if I talk and preach in the United States, the subject of money usually gets people's attention. Yesterday, I gave out a gospel tract at a restaurant, and as I was going out the door, the waiter literally ran after me, offering me money. I want to finish that story for you here today. Also yesterday... At a church in Iowa where I was speaking, I met a pastor there. He leads a church of Karen people. Those are people from the country of Myanmar. He was saved through a gospel trek, but he found it in the mud. So today, we're going to go from money to mud and all connected to gospel tracks. You stay tuned. It's going to be a great day here. I mentioned the gospel tracts here. Now, friend, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We publish over 40 different gospel tracts. We we can't change the gospel message, but we just can come at that message from different vantage points. The one on my hand is written for boys and girls and for moms and dads or people that work with boys and girls. It's entitled, Seven Questions, Boys and Girls ask. Seven questions boys and girls ask. Dear friend, Jesus made the gospel so simple that boys and girls cannot just understand it, but they can receive Christ as Savior. I received Christ when I was seven years of age. As I got to be in my junior high and high school years, my mind was challenged anew and afresh with the truth of the person of Christ and all he had done. I didn't doubt who Christ was. I never doubted who he was or what he had done, but what I came to better understand was all that he had done and the greatness of my need when I received him as my Savior. So I continue to grow in the truth of the gospel. But this this gospel track, seven questions boys and girls ask, it asks questions like this, who is God? Who is Jesus? Where did we come from? Who is the devil? What is sin? What happens when people die? How can you go to heaven? Oh, beloved, those are questions that children need to not only be asking themselves, but 
we as adults who work with children need to be challenging children with those kind of questions. Who is God? What a great question to ask children in any era, including ours. Each question is answered with the word of God. Here's a great gospel tool to use with your own children, with the children that are in your Sunday class or your, your grandchildren. Seven questions boys and girls ask. At the end of the program, my announcer will come back on. He will give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. If you do that, we'll send you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracks. This one will be in it. Please do that. Do it today. Well, two verses are in front of me. This one, Proverbs 11, verses 20, verse 24, says, There is that scattereth, and yet increases. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. Then Matthew chapter 12, verse 30 says, He that is not with me, this is Jesus talking, he that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Now, friend, both of these verses use the word scattereth. One verse uses it positively, the other one negatively. In Proverbs eleven twenty four, it refers to a person's giving. The idea here is of giving money. It says you can give part of your financial resources away, and yet your personal bottom line grows larger. Others, though, hold back from that part which they should be giving, and even though they held back more, their bottom line ends up being less. Now, that may not sound logical to the world's view of economy, but it makes perfect sense in God's economic plan. This gospel ministry, Bible Tracks Echoes and Bible Tracks Incorporated, is dependent upon people scattering some of their resources to us. They do so to see the gospel go farther into the world. And as they do this, God takes care of them and supplies all their needs according to his riches and glory. But that other verse, Matthew 12, verse 30, speaks of scattering as well. Matthew 12 is not about scattering money, but scattering people. Jesus came to gather lost souls to himself. Here in Matthew 12, he puts people into one of two groups. Group one are those people helping him gather lost souls. Group number two are those that are not helping to bring people to Christ. And Jesus says those folks actually end up pushing the lost away from Christ. So, friend, are you scattering your resources for the gospel? And then are you gathering with Jesus or scattering people from him? Well, let me come back to my track stories. Yesterday, I ate dinner in a restaurant with my wife. We were coming home from a preaching weekend. I left the track on the table with my tip for the waiter. The track I used was, I'm keeping the golden rule. Well, the waiter literally ran up to me as I was walking out the door and tried to give me my tip money back. Why? He said he was trying to keep the golden rule. You know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, that rule. Well, I did not take the money, of course, but I did say this. Oh, I said to him, called him by name, you did not read my little pamphlet, did you? He said, no. Then I said, if you will read it, you'll discover why your desire to keep the golden rule may get you in trouble with God. Well, you should have seen the puzzled look on his face. He said, get me in trouble with God. I said, absolutely. There's a whole lot of people who are keeping the golden rule and they're getting in trouble with God because of it. I said, will you read this pamphlet for me? He said that he would. Now, in case you're asking how in the world can somebody get in trouble by keeping the golden rule, it's simply this. Many people keep the golden rule thinking that keeping the golden rule will make them fit for heaven. God will like them because they're keeping the golden rule. That's trying to get to heaven based upon you being good, and you're not good. There's none good, no, not one. We're sinners. We need Christ as Savior. Oh, people who love Christ and people, frankly, in general, I like it if they keep the golden rule but not as a means of making themselves look pretty to God. Well, let me change to that other story. Yesterday as well, as I was out preaching, in the afternoon there was going to be a church service there for the Karen people. I met the pastor for the church of the Karen people. He had gotten saved 
in the country of Myanmar, the old country of Burma there, and he got saved because he read a gospel tract he found in the mud. He saw the track there, and on the face of the track in the mud, on the front of it, was this very depressed and sad person. Well, that's exactly how he was feeling at that very moment in his own soul. His life was full of trials and hardships, and he saw no way out. He was in deep depression. Well, that picture got a hold of his heart, and it said, I want to read what that says there. So he picked up the track out of the mud, washed it off, dried it, and he read the gospel tract. In it, he learned of God's love for him, and through that track, he came to know Jesus Christ as Savior. And as years passed, he came to the United States. He's part of a community of Karin people. He became the pastor of this small group of Karin people, and he's sharing with them the gospel of Jesus Christ and discipling those that believe. Why? Because somebody scattered the gospel seed, and it found root in his life, even though Satan had it thrown into the mud. Oh, my friend, over the last three years of this ministry, we have seen over 300,000 people publicly own Christ as Savior. Those are the ones we know about. How many more are saved beyond that? I don't know, because I will guarantee you many more have come to Christ that we never hear about through our tracks. Of those 300,000 plus people, some were Hindus in India, some were Hindus in Pakistan, others were Muslims in Pakistan, others were people that were used to be communists in Cuba, or there were people living in Mexico and South America, and yes, even here in the United States of America. Let me ask you, would you like to help us continue writing these kinds of gospel stories? Would you like to be part of a ministry that is getting the gospel around the world? Our mission statement has always been taking the word of God to all the world. This year is our 80th year, so we've tacked a little line onto our motto, onto our mission statement. This year we're saying we're taking the word of God to all the world 80 years and counting. Friend, I don't know when Jesus Christ will come again, but I do know that I want to be found serving until he comes or until the Lord takes me out of this world. I may be old and physically frail when I die, if, if that happens before Christ comes. I may not be able to be on the radio and out passing out tracks, but I want to be found faithful. Dear friend, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, are you scattering some of your resources for the cause of the gospel around the world in your local church, maybe even beyond that? Are you gathering people to Jesus Christ. He came to gather lost souls to him. Are you helping him in that regard? Gospel tracks are a great tool to help do that. Be ready because my announcer is going to quickly come on and give our contact information. Friend, let's be gathering people because if you're not gathering with Christ, then you're scattering away from Christ. I would not want to stand before Christ in your shoes or my shoes if I was found scattering people away. Let's help bring people to Jesus Christ. Get our tracks. Be ready when my announcer gives the contact information. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks. P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.